Oh.
The first reading is taken from the Book of Wisdom, chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 to 13. Share in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving in the army gets entangled in everyday affairs. The soldier's aim is to please the enlisting officer. And in the case of an athlete, no one is crowned without competing according to the rules. It is the farmer who does the work who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in all things. Remember Christ Jesus raised from the dead, a descendant for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And the widow your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What is your family name? And what is your race? The judge asked. Of what concern is my family and race to you? Oban replied. If you wish to know the truth about my religion or race, know that I am now a Christian, and I'm ready to do my Christian duty and the dialogue between the judge and Oban continued, with the judge telling Oban, I insist on knowing your name. Tell me at once. My parents named me Oban, he answered, and I worship and adore the living and true God, who created all things. And with these words, Oban more or less signed his death warrant. This conversation reminds me very much of similar conversations we have of late been seeing and hearing of in America with respect to black people's lived experiences at the hands of the police in America. And sadly also occasionally happening here in our beautiful land of Britain. What is your family name? And what is your race? And how did this conversation come about and what triggered it? Today we are, as a church, celebrating the Feast of St. Alban, the first, it is believed, Christian martyr of Britain, the first rec recorded person to die for his faith, or as a result of his faith. We all probably know an awful lot about St. Alban, as he is our patron saint, but the story of how he became a Christian has always fascinated me over the years. And there's so much to teach us about how we should all live our lives as Christians. St. Alban became a follower of Christ after he gave shelter to a priest who was running away from persecution for his faith. After living with the priest, with this priest for a couple of days and weeks and months, Alban or Alban saw how this priest lived his life, a life of prayer and good works, a life that was fully dedicated to God. This really moved Oban to such an extent that he felt instantly that this was the way he should also now live his own life. Oban didn't know this priest prior to this encounter with him. He was not a Christian at all up and until then. Oban had just felt pity for this poor priest who was fleeing from persecution. But following this, his encounter with the priest, his life was fully transformed. Our Bible readings, both from St. Paul's letter to Timothy and also John's gospel, all allude to the idea of suffering and hardship leading even to death for Christ. The priest's way of life was such a powerful testimony that even a pagan like Oban felt moved to renounce everything. My brothers and sisters in Christ, what an example we all have of St. Oban who was prepared to die first in place of and instead of the priest. But the greatest challenge Obed's life gives us is the reminder of how we should all live our lives as Christians or as followers of Christ. St. Obed's life was turned around after encountering a true man of God. Then the question this poses to us, to you and to me is, how exemplary are our Christian lives? Are there any people being transformed by their encounter with us? In other words, are there people out there in our families and communities whose lives have been turned upside down by how we practice our faith and live our lives? 
If not, the question then is why not? The good news I live with you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is may St. Aubin's transformed life give you hope that your Christian life can too be a catalyst for real change in other people's lives, wherever they may be and wherever you may be. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we pray for the Church, especially for all who are persecuted for professing the Christian faith. May Christ be always their source of inspiration and courage, and may they never shrink from praying for their persecutors. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope Francis, Bartholomew the Ecumenical Patriarch, and the leaders of all Christian churches. Lord, hear us. With the Diocese of Birmingham and the Parish of St Lawrence Northfield, we celebrate in prayer and reflection the lives of those with dementia and their carers, and we recall the lives and achievements of those unable to recall memories, especially those we know and love. In our deanery, we pray for the Parish of St Mark, King Standing. Lord, hear us. For Father Jerry and his family, our parish and congregation, under the patronage of St Alban, may we never tire of proclaiming the faith by prayer and holiness. We bring before God the staff, students and governors at St Alban's Academy and Stanhope Hall Wellbeing Hub. We pray for Highgate Baptist Church, St Anne's Roman Catholic Church, the Shear Mosque in Clifton Road, Birmingham Central Mosque, the Bahu Trust and Birmingham Central Synagogue. Lord, hear us. For the leaders of the world, that their decisions may always aim to bring about universal peace with justice. Lord, hear us. Let us give thanks for the dedication of Father James and Father Thomas Pollock to God and to the poor of Highgate and for many years of faithful discipleship by the congregation and clergy of St Albans. Let us bless the Lord. For this parish and all the places that we have our homes, may we be faithful witnesses to the costly love of God demonstrating that love to our families, friends and neighbours and all with whom we come into contact in our daily lives. Lord, hear us. For a blessing on our local community during the COVID-19 pandemic, that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust and friendship where all are known and cared for. Lord, hear us. For those in any kind of trouble, all prisoners, those who mourn, the sick and all who need God's healing touch in their lives, may they derive strength from the intercession of St Alban and from the faith and trust they share with us. We remember all those for whom our prayers have been asked. Lord, hear us. For the faithful departed, that they may rejoice forever in the redemption won for us by Christ, bought with the price of his own precious blood. We remember especially priests who have served this parish and all benefactors of this church and all who have died recently those who have died a result of COVID-19 and those who have died suddenly, alone or unprepared. By name amongst those whose years mind occur at this time, we remember Joyce Witcherly, Richard Jury, Patrick Penderville, George Fatiza, priest, Stella Waldron and Joseph Hipkiss. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord.
Let us ask the prayers of all the saints and of Our Lady, Mother of our Lord and Queen of Martyrs. Hail Mary, full of grace. The God of peace is listening. In silence, we bring him our particular petitions.
is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Thank you.